Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at exam style questions for the dissection practical. Welcome back guys. So in this video we'll just be tackling a few exam style questions. Since we've covered the planning and implementation stages of this practical, it's important that we stop and have a look at some questions that might come up in relation to this. And then once we've done the analysis and evaluation section, we'll do the same with those as well. So we've got a question here that I'll read through now. It says, a student is performing dissection upon a pig's heart and wishes to study the structure of the valves inside the heart chambers. The heart is covered in a thick layer of fat and the valves are inside the muscle walls. So part A says, describe briefly how they can reach the valves and separate them clearly using dissection tools. So this is about three marks. So the videos that we've been going through have been discussing the idea of fish gills, which is a totally different procedure. But if you're familiar with the equipment that we use and the general principles of sort of delving down deeper into specimens, it's more than likely that you're able to answer a question where they just want you to briefly say, how can we reach these structures? How can we dissect this? You don't even need to have a detailed knowledge of the anatomy, although this can help you a lot. It's just a case of understanding the general procedure. So they just want you to describe how you would reach the valves getting through the heart from the start to finish. So let's look at what I've written here. So the first point I made was to basically use the scissors, which is one of the pieces of equipment you should really mention, to cut away the bulk of the fatty tissue, because it's said at the start the heart is covered in a thick layer of fat. So always just start from the beginning. We can't delve straight into the valves, we need to get rid of all the fatty tissue, which we don't really need. And then I said, once we've gotten rid of the bulk, use the scalpel to remove any fine sections of fat left. So that's using the scalpel. And to make an incision through the muscular walls. So with the heart, we know that the heart is a muscular organ that pumps the blood around the body. So we know that the walls are made of muscle. And it says in the question that the valves are inside the muscular walls. So we need to cut through the muscular walls in order to access them because they're within the heart chambers. So we've mentioned the first two steps. The final steps, when the valves are exposed, a mounted pin or a blunt seeker can separate the fibres. So now that we've seen the valves, the student wishes to examine the structure of the valves, so it would be a good idea to separate them, to use the probe to wipe off any sort of blood clots or anything that's uh, lying on them, and then he's got a good visual stance from which to examine them. So it's just a vague answer really, and it, it did say in the question to describe briefly. They're not expecting you to sort of say what angles or depths you have to cut out. That's knowledge that you won't be familiar with, but they want you to understand the general processes of dissection and just be able to use the information that you're given. So don't worry if you've come across a dissection you've never seen before, it's likely that the principles will be very, very similar. So going on to part B then, it says, identify two risks associated with performing the dissection and state two protocols to reduce or prevent these risks. So it's always a good idea with any practical to know some of the risks that could happen and just think laterally through each stage of the process, what could happen? What's the danger here? And if you were doing this, what would you do in order to prevent risks happening? It's a very good way of helping yourself to answer these questions. So let's have a look at what I've put here. I have said that there is a risk of injury from sharp instruments. And you might say, for example, the scalpel or the scissors. So I've said a protocol for this would be always cut away from the body in direction. So it's a very simple idea. And it seems like sort of common sense to a lot of people, but it's a very important thing to bear in mind. There's a lot of sharp instruments, a lot of dangerous fluids. You're concentrating so hard doing the dissection that it's very easy to make a mistake. So this is a very important point to write down. The second risk I put is any risk of allergic reactions, which we referred to in the previous video. This could be to uh, blood or some plant material. If you're dissecting perhaps a rare flower, it might have some pollen or something that could be harmful to you. So it's always important to assess the allergic exposure and the allergies that you have before you begin dissecting. So that's the four marks. We've done the two risks and each protocol that goes with them. The next question says, state an ethical issue one may have with performing dissection on a pig's heart. So in biology, they like to mention ethical issues quite a lot. And as we said in the last video, there, there can be issues with dissection that some people may have beliefs or opinions against it. So I've written here that some may object to using animal parts for science. It may be seen as disrespectful and in some religions and practices and beliefs, they do not support the killing of pigs. So it's quite a wordy answer that I've written here, but I've sort of written it in a long way so that you can understand the different angles you can come from. You can write about how people think that animals deserve their own life and their own sort of respectful death. Some people believe that they shouldn't be used for science after they've died, that they should be respectfully sort of disposed of. And some religions do actually go against the killing of pigs. If you can bring up some sort of ethical issue like this, then any of those would be perfectly acceptable. So the part D says, the student notices there are a lot of blood clots in a specimen. How could the student conclude whether these are anomalous or unusual results or not? 
and this is only two marks. So basically this is just saying how could we work out from a dissection if a feature is an anomalous result or if it's not. And this kind of refers to what we've uh, talked about in the previous video. So I'll show you what I've written here. I've put that in order to do this, uh, dissect multiple heart specimens prepared in the same manner from the same species and age, and then compare the amount of the blood clots. So in any anomalous results, whether this is in an experiment that does get numerical data or an experiment that doesn't get numerical data, for example this one, the best way to determine if something is a sort of recurring incident is to do more multiple experiments of the same thing. But the important thing is, you don't just have to mention that you do multiple specimens. The important point to recognise is that they must be prepared in the same way, from the same species, and generally the age as well, and doing it all in the same process. If you go and get a heart from a different animal, or an animal that was very unhealthy, it's going to be different. It's likely that the blood clots might be due to other reasons. So if you're comparing something, it's good to keep everything as similar as you can to each other. The next question said, state two limitations with dissection of mammalian organs. So this is just quite a vague question to get you to think about the different limitations that exist in dissection, and a couple of these came up in a previous video as well. So I've written here that one limitation is small or microscopic anatomy can be missed or easily lost in the dissection. So in dissection we can sort of get a good picture of the large overview of the structure of the anatomy and a kind of general picture of the different layers but we can't really see the detailed anatomy. If someone isn't so experienced with dissection you could be cutting through different layers and missing bits that are in between. For example with the fish gills experiment the filaments are very fine and very thin that they could be easily mistaken or missed for just being more of the tissue of the wall. So this is one limitation, a lot of the details and the small anatomy can be missed very easily. Another limitation that I wrote here was that they don't actually show how the specimen would look in a living system. So this seems like quite an obvious point because the, the animal's obviously deceased by now, but when you're studying different organs, they've been prepared and sort of stilled so that the anatomy is generally the same, but they're not working in the body anymore. So it doesn't really give you much idea, for example, how the heart would pump the blood through the body. It just shows you where the blood could go or how the kidney would filter blood. So it doesn't show how the organs would work in real life. The next question says, a student describes the structure of the valves to his teacher, but he can only do so vaguely. How could he analyse the valves further to understand their tissue structure and their cellular anatomy? So this is kind of related to one of the limitations that we just mentioned. How could he find more detail about these valves so that he could describe the structure of their actual cellular anatomy? So the fact that they mention cellular anatomy gives you a clue that you need an instrument that's going to tell you about the anatomy of the level of the cell, which is not visible to the naked eye. So the answer that I wrote uh, refers to microscopes. So I said prepare microscopic slides to observe the valve under the microscope. Use different lenses and different lens powers to visualise from the tissue ultrastructure down to the cellular architecture. So it was only two marks. So there, you should really think of a couple of things to say. The obvious thing to say would be to observe it under a microscope. But he wants to describe the anatomy to his teacher in a detailed way. He wants to talk about the tissue structure and the cellular anatomy. He could zoom right in with the microscope to look at the cells, but he wants to get an overview of how they interact with each other in terms of where they are and how they're arranged. So he needs to look at the general tissue structure as well. So it's a good idea to talk about looking through different powers of lenses to see the different layers of detail. So that's just a few more questions there to think about in terms of analysing dissection data and evaluating how we could get more data or how we can improve it. So that concludes the dissection videos. Um, thank you for watching. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.